the cost. You have to ask yourself, am I willing to be saved and single? Amen. Ain't sitting. Y'all hear what I said? Are you willing to be saved and single until God send him? Amen. When you're saved and single, that means you can function in the church. Do whatever you have to do in the church and you don't have to have a bow on the side. You ain't no slip fornicator. Amen. Got quiet in it, boy. Amen. Man, quiet. Amen. You almost hear cars going down the street. <laughs> when you're saving single, mm-hmm. you don't have to have no playmates. That's right. Amen. But you can sing in the choir. Mm-hmm. You can direct the choir. You're on the usher bird. You can do, you can be a minister. But save. Amen. And got you on and your hormones under control. Right. Uh huh. You get a bad case of the willies, you just, uh, the willies, you just uh, go on the fast. Right. Right. And get you back under subjection. Uh, Pine the devil. Right. Fast him out. Pray him out. Folk wondering why, why she ain't running with us. She at the house praying. She's trying to keep stuff down that you letting loose. Well, Evil communication corrupts good manners. You run with weak saints, you're going to be weak. Amen. Ain't getting no help right now. Sometimes you don't need to go to, uh, uh, sometimes you don't need to go to Fridays and all the mother razoos and hanging out late. I'm messing up right now. I see you got some old boys that come in there, they hanging out late. One of them get to looking at you. You said, say that I find you. If he come over here, I'm a witness to him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Certain times of the night, you need to take your happy self on home. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And if you call yourself like him, you don't, you don't bunch up just you and him. That's right. It's you, him, and him, and her. And sometimes an extra her. And sometimes it's you, him, and her, and your daddy. Wow. <laughs> Counting the cost. When you count the cost, when you get saved, are you willing to give God your all? This is what Jesus is saying. Counting the cost. Do you make sacrifices to come to church just like you make sacrifices to go to other stuff? You can save you. The concerts is over. Amen. You ain't out there. Out there. T- you say, I, 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 don't, don't even buy no tickets. Well, uh, well my, my husband, he want me to go to the concert with him. And, and I don't want, no. Tell him, when you live a certain life, he ain't going to ask you to go to no concert. He might say, well, baby, I'm going to the concert. Well, I'll I see you when you come back. You don't disrespect him. But ain't, we ain't going to, we're not going out there. And folks all up there on the stage shaking it. Can you imagine? You say, and you out there at a the concert, and I'm just throwing some stuff y'all. And Tina up there, back in the day, when she had that little old rolling, rolling on, and Proud, proud Mary <laughs> rolling on the river. And you saying, filled with the Holy Ghost. And your husband out there, saying, girl. And you right there with it. And, and she got Proud Mary, everything. Just. <laughs> ain't getting no help right now. Your, your husband say, say, baby, I got some tickets to go to see Beyonce. And she all out there with legs all gapped and just whooping it and doing everything. And, 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 and. and you had to get somebody to babysit so y'all could go and watch. I ain't get no help. Come on, come on, 
Some of, the, some of them, if they tell you, listen, I'm going to a gospel concert. You say, no, I'm not going. I'm not going, God. I don't want to see the devil. Because some of these folks are supposed to be saved. I ain't getting no help right now. So many folks, do you all not know you do better looking at, listening to the song than seeing the video? Because when you see the video, you say, what? And, and it's a sad thing. Most of these men, gospel singers, look like fruits. If you're not a punk, don't look like no punk. The 21st miss. Second miss. Some of y'all missed the first. You don't need no man with no rings in his ear. What you trying to say? You a slave? Jesus don't put no rings in his ear to serve him. Whom the son set free is free indeed. But you know what? When God is dealing with you, it's a strange thing how God was dealing with me. And I didn't understand what was going on. When the Lord was dealing with me, I would go to the party and I love to go to parties. Go to the party. When I get there, everybody having a good time breaking down and doing all that. And I'm sad. I'm miserable. What's going on? How do you open a, a fresh can of beer and time you pop the top on it? It's flat. You know that Punch got enough ever clear and he's going to almost stick a match to it and set it on fire. And you drink the punching. And you don't, you can't get high. You, you ask yourself, what's, what's going on? And down in your spirit, God's dealing with you. God's drawing you to him. Jesus said, no man come unto me except the father draw him and when the presence of God is drawing you don't ever get to the point where the spirit of God stops drawing you because when you get to that point God may not never come your way again every one of you sitting here God created you with purpose and the purpose he created you was is to serve him everything else is secondary your wife, your home, your car, your children. Everything else is secondary. He put us on this earth to serve him. God gave his son. His son gave his life. Now we have to give it, our life back to him. The devil tried to sell this package. You can't do nothing to be saved. You can't, there's no joy in being saved. Let me tell you something. I'm an unhappy man. I'm one happy man. I'm, I, I told Sister Riley, I've just been happy. I'm just happy. I'm, I don't even look at stuff in the same way. When you get to a certain plant, place in God, you don't even see trials or nothing in the same way. You see them as being stepping stones. You see God making you. You see God bringing something out of you so he can put something else in you. You get a greater hunger to see other people say and deliver. You're not satisfied being delivered by yourself. I ain't getting no help right now. You don't worry about the football game and the basketball game. You come in the church. You deliver. You set free. Woo. And sister, I'm going to tell you today, don't worry about what's going on. God knows. God knows. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a keeper. If you never get in a situation, you can't get a miracle. Stop crying because adversity came against you. That's God's way of showing his deliverance power in your life. If you never got broke, you never could be blessed financially. He know what he's doing. Counting the cost. When you count the cost, I'm going to live for God. Irregardless. You can read 25 through 35 in Luke for yourself. tells a strong story. You got to love God more than anything. I didn't get a whole lot of amens this morning. I know this message somebody said, well, Pastor, you like, you like sandpaper, but that's all right. It's different grits. You got to love God more than you love life. God's got to be your everything. 
Saying people got to be your everything. Who would want to be under a pastor that didn't care for you? Who would want to be under a pastor and he, didn't, he wouldn't tell you the truth? Who would want to live in a city with no police? Who want to go to a house and they don't have any rules? Kids do any and everything. Swinging on the chandelier, jumping all off the uh, sofa and up on the top of the china cabinet. No, devil is alive. My, grandbab- my grandbabies know. You come to my house, we ain't got no problem, but you're going to act right. You're not going to come to my house and tear my house up. As hard as we work for what we got, you're just going to come there and use my couch like a trampoline, go in the master bedroom and you're in there just turning flips and jumping all up and down. Oh, if your mama don't get you, quit. Somebody, somebody going to be. Down goes Frazier. And if she jump up and say the wrong thing, you better be careful. I whoop you in a different way now. Take a little breath. Get out. You got to have a constitution. You got to add up the call. You got, you got to figure. Sister Jones used to have a saying when different things would happen. She said, I, I figured that in the cause. When she first got saved, she put that in there. So when it happened, it didn't. I'm getting ready to close. Whether you believe me or not, every one of you sitting here, God has a universal plan. And for every one of you sitting here, God has an individual plan for your life. And the Bible declared, 2 Peter 1 and 3, I'm not going there. He has already given you everything that pertain unto life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him that have called you to glory and virtue. He hath given. Hath. Past tense. Hath given. A double past tense. Hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and God. You know what you have to do? You have to make up in your mind. I'm going to live right. Some people wonder, well, why a man haven't come my way? God's whooping the knots off of him. So when you get him, he won't whoop no knots on you. God's cleaning him up. He's grooming him. So when he come, then y'all going to be life happy ever after. You don't want nobody and you get married. Y'all in there in the room throwing bees. I'm telling you. Man, I don't, don't want to be fun. You're going to be mad. You fighting? No. Folks throwing folks all across the sofa and flying, frying pans flying and folks doing all kind of crazy junk. That ain't marriage. Amen. But when you get the right person, and you tell yourself, put it on click. As I close now, one of the hardest things for a woman to do is put it on click. Y'all just touch, just pinch yourself, see if you're still here. Pinch yourself. One of the hardest things for a woman to do is put it on click. Y'all know what put it on click mean? Why y'all act like y'all don't know? Can, y'all hold your head up and look up this way so you can see me. Put it on click mean? Ain't no way, ain't no way he gonna get away with that. I, 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 I got no. You ain't got to say nothing. Put it on click. Yeah. <laughs> Lord said, "Hold your peace, and I'll fight your battle." Didn't he? Say, am I in the book? Am I in the book? Did he say, "If you hold your peace, I'll, I'll fight your battle"? He said, "If you treat him sweet, and he want to be rough, you heap coals of fire on his head." That means he can't sit still. You put some hot coals, he's he going to have to get it right. And the Lord said, if he don't treat you right, his prayer is going to be hindered. You know what hindered me? He had a prayer coming straight out of Oklahoma. Oklahoma City. God said, because you didn't treat her right, I'm going to send your prayer all up through Seattle, Washington, bring it down the, the uh, West Coast, down to Los Angeles, and, 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 and let it spin in New Mexico a while, and then bring it to Texas. That's what you call hindered. And it could come straight out of Oklahoma City. Wow. 
That's what all God, you know what all God is asking us to do? Count the cost. Who's going to build a house? Who want to call a carpenter over there? I want to do an add-on. And the add-on going to cost you 50000 And you don't have but twenty-five. you You're going to get started. And it's going to be left undone. And everybody's going to be laughing at you. Same thing about when you get saved. And you tell everybody and all your family members, I got the Holy Ghost. God's going to keep you going there and send them all to hell. I'm delivered. Y'all need to get like me. And then you backslide. You become a laughing stock. A mockery to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. When you say you deliver that well, the Bible says, For we have known Christ after the, after the flesh. Yet now know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, oh, when you get saved, you stop doing what you used to do. Right. Don't tell me you saved and you still doing the same job. Looking like the same person. When the Spirit of God comes to you, it changes you. You don't have to, a chicken don't have to go down the road saying, I'm a chicken, I'm a chicken. He's a chicken. He act like a chicken. Smell like a chicken. He look like a chicken. When you save, you don't have to be waving no sign, I'm saved. Going to work with a family Bible. In the lunch room, they're blessing your food. Oh, you're no more, no, 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 you know. No, just, just God bless this food. Where's me eat? Eat one sandwich and then you got to bless the next one. Have a little office party and they ask you to bless the food. God help us. You can't even bless the food. Huh? You got to go speaking in tongues and God help us. You're praying for the president, and God help us, and help the first lady, and God, oh God, bless the mayor in Dallas. And all they ask you to do, just bless the food, just, just bless the food. That's all. Jesus. For we're eating, they, they looking out the corner of their eye, when are when, when they going to finish? Who's going to be cold in a minute? They're they looking like going. Jesus. Count up the cost. Y'all not know it means something to be under a pastor that's going to teach you and tell you the truth? God gave me a style of preaching. Some people are so dogmatic, they feel like they're chopping you up every time they say something. But I can be trimming you real fine and have you laughing at the same time. After a while, when it's settled in, you got the message. I'm getting ready to make an altar call. I sang in a choir. We call ourselves the Interdenominational Youth Choir. We wouldn't say. Just a group of kids that came from various churches. We wanted to sing for Christ. But listen to what I'm saying. We wanted to sing for Christ, but we didn't want to live for Christ. And we would go to churches and sing. And the elderly people would just see us being a group of young people. It was a, man, it had to be 20, 25, 30 of us or more. And people would come up to us crying and tell us, keep on keeping on. And sometimes we would leave church and, and go and party after we had just finished singing. I'm telling you the truth. Sometime before we would go and sing, we would get us a little nip. We said it'd help us sing better. But we would go in there singing all about up above my head. I hear music in the air. I really do believe there's a God somewhere and all that. But we weren't for real. And one day God spoke out of me. At the age of 18, the Lord spoke out of me and said, you're a hypocrite. I'll never forget, I started a club, an organization called the Black Knights. We took a sheet and drew a big shield on this white sheet. And there was 12 diamonds on the sheet, on the shield. And I was the one at the top. And when the Lord saved me, I called a meeting of the Knights, and I told them I said, I'm getting out. They tried to tell me, so you can still be in the Knights and be saved. And a voice spoke out of me and said, you can't serve two masters. I gave the nights up. I was dating a young girl. 
She got her little graduation pictures, and I was, went to my hometown, left my hometown, went to another little city to see her. We were just laughing and talking. Had a little graduation picture, and, I, and I, when she asked me, I said, oh, I don't want no more ugly pictures. We just laughing and talking. And she got mad at me. I couldn't say nothing to her. She wouldn't say nothing to me. And I told her, I said, listen, I drove 20 some miles to see you. My car's out there, and I'm getting ready to go. She didn't say nothing. I got my keys. I got in my car, and I left. The next weekend, I had a little dope party with my brothers and some more guys. And the Lord convicted me. And I got saved that night. When God saved me that night, he convicted me so that I went to church that Sunday morning, stood up in my aunt's Sunday school class, and the, and the superintendent asked me, do you want to have words? I went to talking, tears, tears started dripping down my face. But I know anything, my hands went up, and I said, Lord, save me. That Monday morning, I went back to school. I know my not look like it now, but my sister's a witness. My afro used to be so I could see my hair out the corner of my eye. It looked like something was coming that was my hair. But I read in the Bible, it's a, it's a shame for a man to have long hair. My dad was a barber, and I cut my hair, and I went back to school, and folk was asking me, what happened to you? I said, I got saved. We got ready to graduate. I didn't go to the prom. To the, to the prom. I didn't go to the, all the other stuff they had. The night I got saved, and they was waiting on me to throw the power and all that when I got saved. When I got my diploma, I went home. The devil said, ain't nobody here but you, and I could hear my footsteps in the house. And the Holy Ghost told me, it's a, it's a church service, a tent revival going on down the street. You're already dressed. I went to church. I know I'm saved. Because I, I always felt like the party couldn't be until I got there. It didn't start until I got started. I told folk like this, if I couldn't come to your party, I have my own party. My party's going to be better than yours. I walked into a Holiday Inn one day. I ain't seen this for no glory. Walked into a Holiday Inn on Highway 59. Told this lady, I said, I want to have a party. And I was underage. And I said, I'm going to tell you what we do. We're going to have a party. We want to use the room to have a party. And I said, I promise you, won't nothing go wrong. She said, I could lose my job. I said, ma'am, I, I give you my word. And won't nothing go wrong. A few minutes later, I called the boy and said, I got the key. <laughs> we took the bathtub and made a cool out of it. That next morning, I gave her the key back. I said, I told you, I gave you my word. Then nothing happened. I told God, if I can do all this for the devil, I'm willing to give it all for him. This morning, you know what? I told God a long time ago that I desire to meet a group of young people that love him the way I do. That's all I've ever asked God. For an opportunity to meet a group of young people that love you the way I do. That's willing to give their all. That's willing to tell a dying world goodbye forever. I found a reason to die. They make living easy. I'm not worried about it. This morning, I gave you what God gave me. Somebody need to count the costs up this morning. Are you willing to pay this? Are you willing to give God your all for the kingdom of heaven? And God said, if you do that, whew, I'll open the windows of heaven. And I'll pour you out a blessing. You won't even have room. God not only will bless you in glory, he'll bless you right down here. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. John said, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper be in help, even as thy soul prosper. Isn't it a good thing to know if I die now, I don't have to die again. If I send my sins on before me in the day of judgment when I stand before God, all I can hear the Lord say is, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. It's a hard thing to live a life, a lifetime, and you stand before God and the Lord say, depart from me. I never knew you. But listen to me, baby. If you ever go to hell, you'll never get out. It's a place where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. And the skin worm dieth not. And the smoke ascended forever. People say, well, the grave is hell. No, they measure grave. The book of Revelation says, hell has enlarged itself without measure. Everybody want to go? He's making room for you. Right now, everybody's standing to your feet. Lifting holy hands. But I'd rather doubt it.
I'm getting ready to make an altar call. It's not about church membership. I'm tired of this thing called membership. I'm getting ready to make an altar call for those that want to be a temple. Life is over. I give I know to you. The Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I've kept it. With hope, there's a crown of righteousness. 